I'm noticing that a lot more people are jumping from the traditional food delivery to package delivery, um, shopping apps. And I wanted to give uh, my ideas um, on doing Instacart. I've been doing Instacart since 2019. And in that time, I picked up some tips and tricks that I wanna share with you. The first thing I tell people is to turn the app on. There's not an acceptance rate with Instacart. So you can look at the orders and not accept them and it not hurt your rate like it does with Spark or DoorDash when you decline orders. So just kind of look at it see what stores are busy when they're busy what days they're busy um, kind of give yourself a feel for the app on the Instacart app there is a, a area where it does tell you what stores are busy and when they're busy but if you're a multi-apper like I am you kind of just want to feel it out and so just glance over the app glance over the stores that come through see how much they are because in different areas it's going to tell you what the payouts are because the payouts for Instacart are five, seven, and nine dollars. Um, five dollars being with delivery only, and then it going up from there being heavy items and things like that. So, you just you know, you want to get the idea of where your tips are and how much they are, and just certain areas. When looking over batches, you're gonna have to look at them pretty quick because there is a lot of shoppers out there. But to give you an idea of what you're looking for, you're looking for the batch amount. And then you're gonna look underneath the batch amount, it's gonna tell you how many units and how many items there are. I'll give you an example. One time I did an order for Starbucks. It told me that I had three units. I didn't even look at the items. So I went to the store and I got the small cart for three units, not thinking that it was 30 items. Starbucks had run out of milk and creamer, so I ended up getting milk and creamer, but I ended up getting um, 10 of each. So I ended up with 30 units, but it was three items. So you, those two numbers you wanna definitely take a look at. You're also gonna wanna take a look at your miles and how far they're gonna take you. Cause a lot of times there will be, they will pay you for a certain amount, but the mileage is gonna be too, too far for what they're paying you so kind of like with the other orders um, with the other apps you're looking at your pay versus your miles I always tell people to shop at stores that they're familiar with if you're familiar with a specific store shop in that store because Instacart times you there's a little timer at the bottom of your shop and it will actually time you and put you in red if you are taking too long. The thing I always tell people is to shop in stores that they're very familiar with. Don't go to random stores that Instacart asks you to go to. If they're powered by Instacart, you can usually go to that particular store in any market. So stop, go to stores that you're very familiar with because Instacart times you on your shop. Which is another thing is you are able to look at the order before you actually start shopping. So I tell people to, you know, go to the deli, um, go to the produce, go to the meat, any items that they can get quickly off that list and put in your cart will save you a lot of time because once you hit the start, start shopping, the timer starts and you're able to just scan those items and then go. When I hit start shopping, I usually send my customer a customer greeting, lets them know who I am, and um, it tells them to kind of stay by their phone, you know, in case I have to make any adjustments, the store might be out of something. Just kind of gives them an idea that I'm there. And if they have any questions or anything um, during the shop, to just let me know. So get yourself a uh, custom greeting, let the customers know who you are and that you're gonna be shopping for them and taking care of them. And that way, if something happens where you need to get a hold of them with any refunds or um, exchanges, they'll be right there. Now, Instacart only pays you for the miles from the store to the customer. So um, I notice a lot of people sit at the stores so they don't have that extra miles. You will get orders within um, if you're within a mile, mile and a half of the store anyway from your house, 
but you don't get paid to go to the store like you do with the other app. So if you don't want that extra mileage um, and you know certain stores are busy, then just hang out at that store. Um, I'm lucky where I actually um, work in the evening, I have a Costco. And right up the street, I have a Tops, a Wegmans. I have Walmart for Walmart Spark. Plus, I have like 15 restaurants when I do my DoorDash and Uber Eats. Um, make sure you have a place where you can work. I, th I think it's so much easier. I have my little location that is perfect for dinner time. I have a separate place for lunch, but where I work for dinner time, and I do get a lot of good Instacart orders. Um, spark orders from that area and I'm already out so it makes it a lot easier. One thing that people never even think about and which I never really thought about until I started um, traveling is having quarters spare change in your car. Aldi's I know in my market and I know in a, um, a few other people had told me that you have to use the quarters to get a shopping cart so if you do any Aldi's orders you have to put a quarter in the shopping cart to get the shopping cart, but then you get it back when you return the cart. So make sure you have change for like meter parking and um, quarters for those shopping carts at Aldi's. With the nice weather here, one thing you have to have is one of those hot or cold bags um, for refrigerated stuff, freezer stuff. But make sure you get yourself a hot and cold bag because you're gonna get a lot of freezer stuff. You're gonna get a lot of things that um, require refrigeration. And I'm not sure how long it's gonna take you to get from the store to the customer, but you wanna keep their things cold, especially if they got ice cream and things that come out of the freezer, you wanna keep it cold. So make sure you have a hot and cold bag. I got mine at Walmart. Um, Walmart does sell them, but you can get them on Amazon. You also wanna get yourself a stair climber and a wagon it helps with um loading your groceries and taking them to the house and with the three wheels on this it goes right up the stairs this comes right off and doubles up as a dolly for those cases of water see they fold up for easy storage in your car i will put links in my description for amazon so you can check them out i also got my um wagon at Walmart so you can get them anywhere. I think I've covered everything that um, I have for you know some quick tips and tricks on how to do Instacart um, things that you need those wagons though it's amazing that they're a great investment and I noticed that since I've been doing Spark I also use the wagons when I deliver my Spark orders too so definitely invest in one of those and if you have a in an area where you get a lot of apartments and things. The stair climber is great, especially for carrying up cases of water because it also doubles as a dolly. So it's a really great investment, it's not that much. I will definitely put the links for everything that I've shown you in my description. Um, the bags, um, I'm gonna see if I can find them on Amazon, but I did get mine at Walmart. But if you decide you wanna do Instacart, corner shop spark any of the shopping apps those wagons are a great investment so and and hot and cold bags too because with walmart spark i notice i get a lot of freezer stuff too so you know it works for multiple apps not just the one app but if you're thinking about doing instacart corner shop spark good luck to you the apps are amazing I am enjoying Spark right now. Um, Instacart, you know, that was my bread and butter during the pandemic, but since since then, you know, things have changed a lot with rating systems and pay and things like that. So I don't do as much Instacart as I used to do, but it was my bread and butter during the pandemic. And I, I mean, I enjoy it. I enjoy the people. I, I it's just, a lot of these gig apps, you know, the, the companies make it so that way you don't want to do it a lot, but I don't do it full time. This is just stuff that I've picked up since I've been doing it over the past few years and I wanted to pass it on to you. So good luck doing these apps and I wish you the best. I'll see you in the next video.